What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Mayalari. So this morning, I'm going to break down my predictions for today's MLB trade deadline, which will include where I think Juan Soto will end up. I'm going to give three predictions, three different teams that are in the running right now. I'll break down what I think each trade package could look like. Then also give some other predictions for what the Red Sox are going to do. They did trade Christian Vasquez yesterday, which I will break down probably in my whole MLB trade deadline breakdown, which will probably be tomorrow after every trade goes through. So to start off one Soto right now, it's the LA Dodgers, San Diego Padres, and St. Louis Cardinals in the mix to get him. The Yankees were in the mix at first. They ended up dropping out. The Yankees have been making a ton of moves too, which I'll talk about that in my next episode as well. But as a one Soto right now, the favorite in my opinion, the LA Dodgers, then the San Diego Padres, then the St. Louis Cardinals. I think with the Dodgers, it's just because of how great their farm system is. You really can't go wrong trading with them since they really have one of the deepest farm systems in all of baseball. That even includes all their trades that they've traded their farm system for. If you look at it with the Red Sox, Mookie Betts, they gave up G to Downs, Connor Wong. Not two huge prospects, but still two, two of their top prospects. Then you look at their trades in the past as well for Max Scherzer and Trey Turner last year. They're not afraid to go all in and make big trades, and that's why I think they are my favorite right now to land him. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of what I think each trade package will look like. So for the Dodgers right now, I think they have the most to offer in the deal. If you add in, let's say, Gavin Lux and Dustin May, two MLB-proven players that are no longer on their prospects list, but are two very young players, with James Outman, their number 18 prospect, who actually just made his MLB debut of the weekend, Went 3 or 4 in that game with a double, a single, and a home run. You add in him. He's an outfielder, very good player. Ryan Pepio, the number 73 MLB prospect. Los Angeles Dodgers, number 6 prospect overall, right-handed pitcher. Along with Andy Pages, an outfielder, number 45 MLB prospect, and number 4 Dodgers prospect overall. With Michael Bush, a second baseman slash first baseman in the LA Dodgers farm system. He's number 3 on the LA Dodgers prospects list and number 40 on the MLB list overall. I think you add all of them in a deal. I know it seems like a ton to get Soto, but I think you're going to have to overpay to get him since you're in the running with the Padres and the Cardinals. You're going to have to overpay, and I think the best chances for a team to overpay is the LA Dodgers because, as I said, of how much they have to offer. They have so much to offer, they can overpay and still stay afloat and still have a great future in their farm system because how deep they've drafted, how well they've drafted and developed, guys. So I'm going to go with the Dodgers there. That's my package for them. The Dodgers right now have six top 100 prospects. And if you look at it, they do have the money to pay Soto at the end of this year. They will have Trey Turner off the books after the end of this year. He's getting $21 million this year. David Price will be off the books after this season. $16 million off the books there since they split the $32 million of his contract with the Red Sox when they traded him over for Mookie Betts, with Mookie Betts. Craig Kimbrell will be off the payroll at the end of this year, $16 million. And then Clayton Kershaw will be off the books too for $17 million. So all four of those players right there, Kershaw, Kimbrough, Price, Turner, that's $70 million the Dodgers can save. So I know Soto still has two years and change left on his contract. But I think if you look at it at the end of the day, the Dodgers can pay him long term. And I think at the end of the day, Team C, they can have two years, three playoff runs really, two full seasons with the end of this season. So two and a half years of them with three playoff runs, I think teams will overpay to try to get him. But I think if the Dodgers were to trade for him, I think they'd want to sign him to a long-term deal since they're giving up so much to get him. I think the other teams are going to try to, too. But the Dodgers just have so much money to offer with all three of those guys coming off the books. Next up, the San Diego Padres only have three top 100 prospects. I think it would cost at least two of them to get him along with probably three or four of their other prospects uh, in their top 10 to 15. So right now, I think they'd have to give C.J. Abrams their current starting shortstop. Robert Hassel, the number 21 MLB prospect, he's an outfielder and the number one San Diego Padres prospect, so he'd be a great add in the deal. So I got Hassel, Abrams, Jackson Merrill, a shortstop, number four San Diego Padres prospect, then also James Wood, number three San Diego Padres prospect, and he's also the number 88 prospect on MLB.com. He's an outfielder, very good player, I think he has to be included in that deal, and then also Josh Ramirez, an outfielder, number seven prospect in the San Diego Padres system. So I have three of the San Diego Padres' top four prospects going in this deal, along with C.J. Abrams. So I got Abrams, Hassel, Merrill, Mears, and James Wood. James Wood, I think, is a big part of that deal. I'm not sure if they're going to give him up since he's such a highly touted prospect. Then number three, number 88 overall on MLB.com. 
And I think also since they want to add a guy like Josh Bell, I think you'd have to add in another guy like Joshua Mears. Josh Bell would become their first baseman. And, I mean, if you look at that Padres lineup, once they get Tatis back, it's going to be absolutely ridiculous if you add Juan Soto in there with Tatis, with Josh Bell. That's going to be a wild lineup to watch. So that's my deal right now with the San Diego Padres. I think they have the second best chance of getting them. Then the third chance, the third team, I have the St. Louis Cardinals. They have a great farm system. Uh, Matthew Libertor, number two, St. Louis Cardinals prospect, number 43 prospect at MLB.com. He's a left-handed pitcher. Very good player, has great stuff, shows great movement and depth on his pitches. I think he'll be in that deal if he were to be traded. I got Jordan Walker, third baseman, number one St. Louis Cardinals prospect, number six MLB.com prospect overall. I think the Cardinals would not be getting Juan Soto. If you look at how good Juan Soto is, he's number, he's 23 years old, one of the best hitters in baseball. His numbers are still great, even though he's having a down year. If you look at it, he's having still a good season overall. He has 20 home runs, which is more than Aaron Otto, Machado, and Freeman. He has an 878 OPS, which is better than Betts, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Shohei Otani. 403 on base percentage, which is better than Aaron Judge, Rafael Devers, and Mike Trout. 60 runs scored, which is better than Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Shohei Otani, and Jose Altuve. And then 88 walks, which is also the best in the MLB. So if you look at it, one soda you're not going to get without giving up a ton. I think that's a given. I think everyone knows how good a player he is. He's only 23 years old, still has two and a half years left of control, and you can make three playoff runs with him in your lineup. I don't think you're going to get him for free, and I think you're going to have to overpay. So I think the St. Louis Cardinals, if they were to get him, they're going to have to overpay. I do think they have the money to pay him, though, since they're really only paying Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, since at the end of this year, Wainwright will be off the payroll and Yadier and Molina. So Adam Wainwright and Yadier and Molina will be off the payroll. I think they're going to have... A lot of money to pay him in the future if they would want to pay him. San Diego Padres just paid Tatis a ton of money. But I think at the end of the day, they could get a deal done too for him. If they were to trade a ton, I think any team of these three that trade him, I think they're going to want to pay him a long-term deal since you're giving up so many prospects to get him. And obviously he's a superstar. He's a stud. So you're not going to get him without giving up a ton, as I said. So my Cardinals trade package, I got Matthew Libertor, number two, St. Louis Cardinals prospect, number 43 in MLB.com, a left-handed pitcher. I got Jordan Walker, third baseman, number one, St. Louis Cardinals prospect, number six, MLB.com prospect. And then I got Joshua Baez. I think he's a wild card in this deal. I really like his his abilities out there in the field. He's actually from Boston. Power hitting outfielder, was a 2021 second round pick. Joshua Baez, number six, St. Louis Cardinals prospect. I think he has great stuff on the field. He's a great outfielding and hit a ton. I got Mason Wynn also in that deal, 2020 second rounder, shortstop, number four St. Louis Cardinals prospect, and number 87 prospect on MLB.com. I think they'd also have to give up Dylan Carlson, even though it might seem like a lot already. I think you have to give up some proven MLB talent right now. And and if you're going to get Juan Soto, I think you have to give Dylan Carlson, since I think the Nationals are going to want some MLB talent, like a C.J. Abrams from the Padres, or like a Dustin May or Gavin Lux from the Dodgers. So I think you have to give up Dylan Carlson, very young, good outfielder. If you look at it, the Cardinals do have five top 100 prospects, so they could make it done. They could make a deal done. And if you look at the other teams, I mean, the Padres only have three top 100 prospects, so they could trade more with C.J. Abrams and also give up three of their top five prospects and get a deal done. Then you look at the Dodgers, six top 100 prospects. I would not be surprised if that were to be a possibility for him to go is the Dodgers since they have so much money to pay and such a great farm system. So now I'm going to break down some of Juan Soto's stats. If you look at it, he's had such a great power weight over his career. Five seasons now in the MLB with 119 home runs, 358 RBIs, 38 stolen bases, a 291 career batting average, a 427 on base percentage, a 538 slugger percentage, and 966 OPS. I think whatever team's getting him is getting a superstar, clearly, with still two more years of control on his deal. That's such a big pickup for whatever team gets him. I think if you look at the end of the day, no other MLB trade deadline is going to be like this one. If Juan Soto's traded, this is going to be one of the biggest trade deadlines in MLB trade deadline history because no player has ever been traded at this caliber, at this stardom, at 23 years old. He's 23. He's He was in the MLB at 19 years old. In 2018, he made his MLB debut at just 19 years old. He was only 19 years old in his MLB debut in 2018. He's only 23 now in his fifth season. 
it's ridiculous how talented this kid is. And as a rookie in 116 games, he had 22 home runs. He lit up the league right away when he came in. In 116 games, 22 home runs, 70 RBIs. He was second in rookie of the year voting. He was second in MVP voting last year. Now a two-time All-Star, 2019 World Series champion, two-time Silver Slugger, home run derby champ. Also won a batting title as well in 2020 with a 351 batting average. You're getting a ton in return. If you get one soda, how much you give up? You're going to give up a ton, but you're also getting a ton of return with his talent. If you look at Josh Bell this year, having a very good season, one-time All-Star. I think he could have been an All-Star this year. He wasn't, unfortunately. 301 batting average, 14 home runs, 57 RBIs, 61 strikeouts to 49 walks, a 384 on base percentage, a 493 slugging percentage, and an 877 OPS. He has had a very good year for them offensively, and I think they're going to add him in the deal, especially if it's the Padres. It seems like the Padres want him in the deal. I think this is going to be similar to what the Dodgers did last year, where they're going to trade Max Scherzer, and then all of a sudden they add Trey Turner in the deal and send him to the Dodgers too and get more in return. The Nationals got more in returns by adding Trey Turner with a year left of control since you know he's a free agent after this year, so they got a year and a half technically last year and they traded him of control. They got more in return for the Nationals, so I think the Nationals would trade Josh Bell in this deal as well. Get more in return. Obviously, you have two years of Juan Soto. As I said, then with Josh Bell, he's a free agent at the end of this year. He signed a one-year, $10 million deal in the offseason with the Nationals. Kind of a prove-it deal for him since he had a good year last year, but was going into this year. Probably trying to get more money. Realized, if I sign a one-year deal of a really good season, I can get more money in the future with a longer-term deal at the end of this year. So he signed just a one-year, $10 million prove-it deal, but ends up being... A very good deal for him at the end of the day since he'll be a free agent at the end of this year and probably can make himself some more money at the end of this offseason. So if you look at it in the end of the offseason, I mean December, January of next year, he'll be signing probably a bigger deal. So for Juan Soto, you're going to give up a ton, as I said, a lot of prospects. It's going to be the biggest haul probably in MLB history, no matter which of these three teams make a trade for him. I don't think there's a great chance the Nationals keep him. I know Jeff Passan said on Friday it's an 80% chance he's traded, and I probably say it's like a 90% chance now just because of all the deals they're probably getting. They probably know, the Nationals know, we can't pay him. You offer them 15 years, $440 million. He said no to that. We can't give him any more money. We might as well trade him now and try to get more in return. And so if you look at it, they're going to get most right now since the team's going to be trying to make a playoff run right now. You get an extra half a season than you would if you trade him in the offseason. If the Nationals traded him in December, you just get two years of him rather than two and a half years than if you traded him now. So the Nationals are going to get more from him now if they trade him. So I think they trade him today. I'd say it's a 90% chance. And my favorites, as I said, I think the Dodgers are my favorite. And then I'm going to go Padres second. I think the Padres, the interesting thing with them is they're paying Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado a ton of money. But I still think they could maneuver away to get one soda long-term deal as well. I know you're going to be trying to win the World Series this year and the next two. And if you win the World Series... At the end of the day, whatever you give up might be worth it. But I think you're going to still try to sign him to a bigger contract since you're giving up so much to get him. So, as I said, I think this will be one of the craziest MLB trade deadlines. I didn't even talk about the Red Sox yet. So, at the Red Sox, they traded Jake Diekman yesterday. Traded Jake Diekman, that was to the Chicago White Sox. They also got Tommy Pham in a deal for a player to be named later with the Cincinnati Reds. And the Red Sox also traded Christian Vasquez to the Astros for two minor leaguers. I think today J.D. Martinez could be on the move. I think they'll keep Nate Evaldi. He had a very good game last night. I think, I think they'll end up keeping Nate Evaldi, but I do think Michael Walker and Rich Hill could be traded. I think Nate Evaldi could still be traded too, but I think they keep Nate just because if we're still trying to make a run at it, I think you need Nate in that rotation. Probably Walker as well. You can probably do it without Rich Hill. But if you traded Vasquez, I think they knew their highest return was this trade deadline. The most you're going to get in return for him is right now because if you're going to let him walk in the offseason, you're not going to get anything in return. So... Long story short, with the Red Sox trade deadline, I think the Red Sox end up trading Michael Walker, Rich Hill, and I do think J.D. Martinez has a 65% chance to be traded at this trade deadline. I think it's 65% for J.D. to be traded, 50-50 for Walker, and probably like 70-30 for Rich Hill, since Rich Hill, already 42, 43 years old, and doesn't have much left to offer. Maybe you can give a team in a playoff push some help in relief, or maybe a back end of the rotation fifth starter. But... I think at the end of the day, the Red Sox know they're going to be in the middle of selling and also buying. And if you're not going to be paying J.D. Martinez at the end of the offseason, which is very unlikely anyways, if you don't think we can win with this current team we have, 
you probably end up trading J.D. Martinez as well. For a couple minor leagues, I'd imagine, since he's still having a decent season, hitting around 288, still obviously a good player. I think he can help a World Series team. And clearly, if you look at what the Red Sox got, got out of him, we got everything out of him we needed. The Red Sox got a ton out of that out of that long-term deal that he signed with Dave Dombrowski, who was the GM. It ends up working out. The Red Sox win the World Series because of it, and J.D. had a great career in Boston. So that's my MLB trade predictions for Juan Soto. That's what I think the Red Sox will do. I think they'll end up trading J.D. Martinez, I said, a 65% chance. And then if you look at it, also Shohei Otani, which I was going to talk about yesterday. I was planning on talking about a Shohei Otani potential deal, but – the LA Angels end up saying they're going to keep Shohei Otani. They will not be trading him. He has one year left of control after this season. And I think at the end of the day, they realize they got to keep him and Trout together for at least one more year. Maybe get lucky next year in the offseason, sign a couple pitches. I know they have a ton of guys they could offer the trade deadline. Noah Syndergaard probably is on the move today, even though he's scheduled to start tonight. Um, another thing is, speaking of starting, Jacob DeGrom will be making his MLB debut tonight, his first game back since July of 2021, so very much anticipated debut for him. The New York Mets finally have their dream rotation of Max Scherzer and Jacob DeGrom together, healthy at the same time, which has been really hard for that Mets team over the last few years with DeGrom getting hurt. He really is the best pitcher in baseball when he's on, and with him hurt, it's such a hole in that rotation, but when you bring in a guy like Max Scherzer, you can still stay afloat while Jacob DeGrom is hurt. So. Happy to see both of those guys healthy. I think DeGrom probably goes about five or six innings tonight. Probably gives about eight to nine strikeouts. Probably have a great game. Probably take him out for five or six innings since they don't want to give him too much work and get him hurt. But I think it'll be a great playoff push for this Mets team. I think they're a potential team that could get J.D. Martinez. If Martinez is traded, I think the Mets right now are my favorite to land him. They've been very interested in him. They also are interested in Christian Vasquez. Obviously didn't get him. Maybe they get Wilson Contreras now from the Cubs. Ian Happ also on the trade block as well. A couple other guys in the trade block, Jose Iglesias of the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies will not be trading their closer, Daniel Bard, though. The Chicago Cubs will be heavy sellers at this trade deadline. They got David Robinson, their closer, having a great season. Couldn't end up moving him. Ian Happ could be moved. Kyle Hendricks could be moved. Wilson Contreras probably will be moved. So they're going to be heavy sellers at this trade deadline. Along with some other teams, I think the Orioles... After trading Trey Mancini yesterday, I think they're probably going to be sellers. They could trade Jorge Lopez as well. So we'll end up seeing where that goes. I think they could keep Lopez. The Orioles have had a top three bullpen this season, ERA-wise. They're having a great year. So maybe they do keep L Lopez there since they still have a few, years, a few years left to control in him. But as for sellers, the Diamondbacks will be sellers. The Reds, Tigers. Red Sox are probably going to be in the middle between buyers and sellers. Buyers. Heavy buyers, obviously the San Diego Padres, LA Dodgers, New York Mets, New York Yankees. All of the usual buyers at the trade deadline will still be buyers there. The Astros as well. The White Sox will be buyers. But I think if you look at it, the Red Sox will be in the middle between buyers and sellers, selling some of their pieces while also getting some guys in return like Tommy Pham. So when I'm seeing how this trade deadline goes, as I said, the Cubs will be heavy sellers. Getting rid of probably Ian Happ, David Robinson, Wilson Contreras, Kyle Hendricks. All those guys are on the trade block. Then also, I think the LA Angels will be heavy sellers as well. I think Noah Syndergaard will probably be moved by today's trade deadline. The Oakland Athletics will be sellers as well. I know I talked about it in my last episode, maybe two episodes ago now, that they could potentially trade a guy like Jed Lowry, a veteran off the bench, maybe give some juice to a team off the bench. I know he's hurt, so... It's not very likely they would trade him, but they definitely could trade their catcher, Sean Murphy, having a good season as well. Uh, not many catches. Uh, great offensively. He's one of the better offensive catches in baseball. On the year, Murphy's hitting 238 with 12 home runs, a 314 on base percentage, and a 737 OPS. Was actually the gold glove winner for the catcher position in 2021, hitting 17 home runs as, as well to go along with 59 RBIs and a 216 batting average, having a better than this year. Batting average-wise, hitting 238. OPS went up from 710 last year, 737. His first two years in the MLB, though, in 2019-2020, didn't play that many games in 2019, only 20 games a rookie, and then 43 out of 60 games in 2020. Had an 899 OPS and an 821 OPS. Was having better years then, but obviously, the more you play, the more likelihood that your OPS and the batting average are going to go down. And that's the same thing with the Red Sox right now. Jaron Duran playing more games. His batting average has been going down gradually over time. So 
At the end of the day, I think Sean Murphy will be traded at this trade deadline, and I'm very interested to see what all these teams will get in return for the bigger names like Wilson Contreras, Juan Soto. I think Juan Soto will be the biggest trade package in MLB trade deadline history and MLB history in general because no player has been traded at this caliber, at this height, as a superstar, at this young at 23 years old. You're going to have two and a half years of control with him and have three playoff pushes to make with him. So I'm very excited to see where Juan Soto goes. I said the Dodgers, Padres, Cardinals, that's my order of where he can end up. But as I said, I would not be surprised with any of these three destinations for him since they have a lot to offer, all three of them. But the Dodgers are the most to offer with six guys in the MLB Top 100 MLB.com prospects. So anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. I will be back on again tomorrow. As I said, the trade deadline is tonight at 6 p.m., so I'll break down all the biggest trades at the MLB trade deadline from today. I'll break that down tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern time, so it's about another nine hours away. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.